Hey there, in this video I want to share with you three tips I wish I had known as a beginner in Webflow. These tips have helped me tremendously in my Webflow journey and I want to share them with you so that if you are just starting out with Webflow, you can benefit from them as well. The first tip I want to share with you is that if you're going to have animations or interactions, make sure they're done tastefully and subtly. A lot of times people will design these Webflow websites with complex animations. They'll have text boxes flying in and out, images flying in and out. And while that might appear to be cool at first glance, it can really take away from the user experience. There's a lot of discussion about what is trendy in web design, and I can tell you that one trend that never goes out of style is accessibility. Having an inaccessible website can cost you in more ways than you realize. Federal lawsuits regarding inaccessible websites have been on the rise over the past few years, so this isn't something that should be overlooked. Some visitors of websites that use complex animations have complained of experiencing vertigo and dizzy spells. So you really want to make sure if you're going to have them, they're done subtly and tastefully. One example I constantly see on Webflow websites is something like this that I quickly mocked up in this website. So I'm going to go head over to the published version. And if you see, if I scroll down fast, I sometimes get to the section before the animation finishes. This is really distracting for a user, especially if they visit your website for the very first time. This is essentially a form of scroll jacking. You want to allow your user to enjoy your website on their own terms. Another animation I frequently see is something like this, where the animation happens while the page is scrolling. So if you look at this container right here, it doesn't get 100% until a certain part of my scroll position. If I'm not at that position, it makes it really difficult to read because either it's faded out or it's scaled down. It could be really distracting for a user to read and digest your content with all these complex animations occurring. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't have any animations or interactions at all. If they're done tastefully and subtly, they can really add a lot to your project. But there's a fine line when it comes to tasteful and over the top. The second tip I want to share with you is more so applies to hero sections. What I'll see is a lot of people is they want to have a grand entrance for their hero section. So they'll set their hero section to have a height of 100 viewport height, 90 viewport height, even 80 viewport height. And while you don't notice this in the designer view, this really can cause a problem because you don't know the height of the end user's browser. So for example, if your content is larger than the browser window, it will overlap the section and bleed onto the next section. So for example, if I made this section 40 viewport height and then published it to show you what I mean, if I head over to the published site, see right now it looks bad, but it's full screen. If I shrink it down, that button and that paragraph starts to go onto the next section. What you want to do is you want to set the minimum height to the height you desire. For example, set the height to auto and then have your height to 90 viewport height or 100 viewport height or whatever viewport height you want your hero section to be. And the third tip is something that really helped me when it comes time to making the website mobile responsive. In web design, we have these div blocks that comprise the sections. And within those sections, we have even more div blocks that we use as containers and wrappers. One thing that really helped me was when I have my container or wrapper is setting a max width of how wide I want that container to be and then a percentage as the width. So if you look at this example right here, I have my container or wrapper at a max width of 1280 pixels, but then I have it as a width of 90%. What this means is if I don't put a height or put a width on the section itself, it will take up 
of the parent section, which means that because there's no whip set and styled on the hero section, it's default 100%. So what this means is this wrapper, or for some people what they would label as a container, is going to be 90% of that parent section. So regardless of what screen size, as I cascade down, it is always going to be 90% of the parent section, which makes it really easy to design mobile responsive, especially if you're just starting out. And there you have it. Those are my three tips for beginners in Webflow. Let me know in the comments if you use any of these tips and if they have benefited you. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.